Today, I'm going to talk about eclipses. An eclipse, quite simply, is when some celestial body, such as a planet or moon, passes in front of another celestial body, often a star. In this way, the second celestial body is blocked or eclipsed from our view. An eclipse can happen between any three celestial bodies. On Earth, however, there are two types of eclipse a lunar eclipse, and a solar eclipse. Eclipses are relatively rare, since the orbit of the Earth around the Sun and the orbit of the Moon around the Earth are tilted relative to each other. Lunar eclipses only occur around every six months, and total solar eclipses are around every two years, somewhere in the world. A total eclipse occurring within easy driving distance, however, only takes place a few times per life. Before we get into eclipses, a discussion of shadows is in order. There are three parts to a shadow. The umbra, the penumbra, and the antumbra. The umbra, located directly behind the object, is the darkest part of the object's shadow. This is where all direct light is blocked. The penumbra, which surrounds the umbra, is the lighter part of an object's shadow, where only some of the light is blocked. The antumbra, then, is behind the umbra. Due to the way light travels around an object, some direct light will get through when you are far enough away from that object. This is the antumbra. In this way, it is similar in brightness to the penumbra. The key distinction is that, when looking at an eclipse, the penumbra will show a crescent of the eclipsed object, while the antumbra will show the eclipse O inside the eclipse C. A lunar eclipse is when the Earth passes between the Sun and the Moon, blocking the Moon's view of the Sun. There are three types of lunar eclipse, penumbral, partial, and total. The first type, penumbral, is when the moon passes into Earth's penumbra, and only its penumbra. Since a good chunk of light still gets through the penumbra, the moon only appears slightly darker. In general, you would probably not be able to tell if a penumbral lunar eclipse occurred. The second type, partial, is more interesting. This is where the moon is partly in the Earth's penumbra and partly in its umbra. This causes a section of the moon to appear dark, leaving only a visible crescent. The final lunar eclipse, total, is the most interesting. During a total lunar eclipse, the moon glows an orangish red. This happens because the moon passes into the Earth's umbra, which blocks out all direct sunlight. The moon appears red instead of black due to light scattering through the Earth's atmosphere. It's the same mechanism that makes the sky appear red during a sunset. A solar eclipse is when the moon passes in front of the sun, blocking the Earth's view. The solar eclipse is split into three types, partial eclipses, annular eclipses, and total eclipses. A penumbral solar eclipse cannot take place since we are viewing the sun directly. The moon simply cannot block some of the sun's light without also blocking some of the sun itself. Nevertheless, when the Earth is in the Moon's penumbra, we have a partial solar eclipse. Similar to the lunar version, a partial solar eclipse blocks part of the Sun, making the Sun appear as a crescent. Due to the immense output of light from the Sun, the sky still appears quite bright, even at only 1% illumination. For this reason, looking at a partial eclipse is just as bad as looking at the sun on a normal day. 
A variation of the partial eclipse is the annular eclipse. This is when the Earth is in the Moon's antumbra. In this case, the Sun will appear as a ring around the Moon. This is otherwise just as bright as a partial eclipse. A lunar annular eclipse cannot happen because the orbit of the Moon is well within the end point of Earth's umbra. Finally, the total solar eclipse is when part of the Earth is in the Moon's umbra. This causes the Moon to completely block out the Sun. Without the overpowering light from the Sun, the sky becomes dark, and stars behind the Sun become visible. At the same time, the corona, the outermost and faintest part of the Sun, can be seen. It is also perfectly safe to look at the Sun during a total eclipse. I have been lucky enough to witness and capture on camera both a total lunar eclipse and a total solar eclipse. The lunar eclipse took place during a full moon, as they always do. As time passed, the moon slowly turned orange until it was completely behind the Earth. While this was cool to see, the total solar eclipse was significantly cooler. The solar eclipse was actually fairly difficult to get to. Since the moon is so much smaller than the Earth, the total lunar eclipse was visible almost everywhere the moon was. On the flip side, the total solar eclipse could only be seen in a narrow band. I could see the lunar eclipse in my backyard, but I had to drive about four hours south to see the total solar eclipse. It was worth it when I got there, though. As the moon passed in front of the sun, the sky turned dark, and the corona appeared. I heard a bunch of animals in the surrounding area start to freak out. Dogs, at least I presume they were dogs, started barking, and the birds began singing their nighttime song. It was actually very eerie, feeling almost apocalyptic. If you get the opportunity to see either eclipse, I highly recommend you go.